And then it ends with a police officer shooting and killing a black man who is pinned face down on the ground. You're face to face with hatred. Would you yell? Would you punch? For Aaron Courtney, a high school football coach from Gainesville, Florida, the answer was hug. Courtney was on his way out from a protest against white nationalist Richard Spencer's speech at University of Florida when he spotted his chance to confront someone who hates his very existence. He just had one question. Why the fuck you don't like me? A former police officer in the U.S. state of Georgia has been charged with the murder of an unarmed black man. Rayshard Brooks was shot twice in the back as he fled from two white officers in a car park in Atlanta. Garrett Rolfe, who was sacked from the police force shortly after the shooting, could face the death penalty if he's found guilty. Our North America correspondent, Nick Bryant, takes up the story. It started out as a routine call. An African-American reported asleep in his vehicle in the car park of a fast food restaurant in Atlanta, Georgia. Some of men. Can you step out with me, please? Yes, sir. Rayshard Brooks was asked by police to take a sobriety test. Then he suggested he walk to his sister's home nearby. I go home. I have my daughter's there right now. My, three, my daughter's birthday was yesterday. Right. Hold on, Miss Brooks. Blah, 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 blah. Stop. But after he failed a breath test, the police decided to take him into custody, who responded by fatally shooting him in the back. Tonight, prosecutors revealed shocking new details that Garrett Rolf, the officer who killed Rayshard Brooks, had kicked him on the floor afterwards. And the other officer, Devin Brosnan, stood on his shoulders. Neither offered any medical help. From a witness who says that she watched police shoot a pregnant woman five times. Kansas City police say they pulled the woman over because the car she was in matched the description from a carjacking. Bring from a witness who says that she watched police shoot a pregnant woman five times. That she watched police shoot a pregnant woman five times. Why the fuck you don't like me? But Randy Furness, a neo-Nazi skinhead, didn't have an answer. Instead, he stared. That's when Courtney, taking his father's teaching as a bishop at heart, offered Furness a hug. And finally, he got an answer. Yeah, Amber Geiger claimed she mistakenly walked into Botham Jean's apartment shooting and killing the 26-year-old. She claimed she feared for her life while well, the jury... That's when Courtney, taking his father's teaching as a bishop at heart, offered Furness a hug. And finally, he got an answer. Now the judge is uh, talking to Amber. Oh my God, I'm, the judge is down there um, talking to Amber. I, I don't, I just don't think I've ever seen anything quite like this. What do you think's happening right now? I have no idea, quite honestly. Quite like this, what do you think's happening right now? I have no idea. That's when Courtney, taking his father's teaching as a bishop at heart, offered Furness a hug. Can I give her a hug, please? It's a hug now seen everywhere. The image and the video replicated in newspapers, websites, social media, and TV around the world. Then the emails hit us here in Dallas. Churches asking us if it was video they could use for their next Sunday service. Places like Cuyahoga Valley Church in Cleveland, Ohio. Stunning and extraordinary. Where Pastor Chad Allen said it was exactly what he was looking for. We need more of those types of examples uh, in this world today. His planned Sunday sermon is on the New Testament message to love your enemy. That's when Courtney, taking his father's teaching as a bishop at heart, offered Furness a hug, and finally he got an answer. Um, the hug between Amber Geiger and Botham Jean's brother, and now the judge. Uh, it, it, it sounded like maybe she was reading a, a Bible scripture or witnessing somehow. I mean, it's just a, oh my God, now the, the judge is hugging Amber Geiger. I, okay, this is, um, I'm starting to lose it again. Well, <laughs> and I, without Facebook, my Facebook uh, commenters are saying that the judge gave Amber Geiger a Bible. That's when Courtney, taking his father's teaching as a bishop at heart, offered Furness a hug, and finally he got an answer. I want to give all the praises and the honor to Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shah Bahashem, Rachaha Kodash, 
and double honors to the elder apostles, elders of Great Millstone. Shalom to you, brethren, you followers of the truth. Shalom to the elect. Anyway, I want to go in this disturbing video I kind of put together. These were two separate videos that I did in the past, and I kind of just brought them together along with a couple of other clips, which is, a you know, I can't say very much in a video, so I'm going to just try to hit the points. We can see this uh, as an example of full-fledged plantation Christianity, right? We can see this. Now, you can read a book, which I haven't read. I don't believe I read all of it, but you can read a book called um, Converting Negroes, Negro Slaves to Christianity. And this was part of it. And this is why would you, when you had the slave Bible, you had people said they used the, um, the Bible that would put us in slavery. No, it's what they did to the Bible as Revelation, uh, the last chapter said, I think Revelation 19, if any man take the words out of the book, he shall be taken as part of the book of life. So um, this man, let me say that, is already out. He, you know, this is why the Hebrews 12 says, um, he has no place of repentance. He was rejected. Basically, he's a profane person. And that's, uh, you know, who that is. Who literally, they kind of added and took away by making up things as they took the scriptures away. And those Christian nationalists, this all ties in. Um, in Revelation 22 and 18, when it says, I think 22, says anyone should add or take away those christian nationalists been doing that for years that's why they come up with so many different translations right to try to hide and this in deceit and you know use deception but then this guy vocab malone they can't do it no more so now they gotta get these people who doesn't understand the scriptures the way we do because it's spiritual and it come with a carnal background you know so I kind of, you know, this is kind of crazy, you know, that these guys will hug, will teach to hug everybody, love everybody. But we have the most hatred towards one another. Right? We can see that. Black Lives Matter marching because the reason why they're mad and they want to march is because they want to make it and they want this man, I can only say that, they want this man who runs everything to get on a playing field to love them. That's the best way I can say it. They're not doing it like when it comes to us, we're shooting each other and killing each other. We don't want to do right. We don't want the other, the next man of our, 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 the enemy, which we'll get into in a second, which is us Israelites. We only could be enemies to one another. Right when it says love your enemies, that's talking about Israelites. You have different enemies. You have the enemies of the nation. You have enemies of your own. But we don't sit up there and march when a little child gets blown away, or a mother drowns her children or, or chokes them off. We don't have worldwide big marches across the UK and America. Why? Because you don't care about them getting right. You only march because you want correction for this man to do right. And that's why this woman got up and hugged Amber Geiger. That's why this man, who father was a Baptist, said, go ahead and love. This is all they believe. But it's not amongst one another. Right? They only want to love uh, them. Let's go to Jeremiah 4 and 22. The scripture breaks down itself. For my people is foolish. They have none understanding. They have not known me. They are sottish, which means foolish or stupidity. And, and when you look up sottish also, it also goes back to the word sot, which means an habitual drunkard. An habitual drunkard will drink, 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 go in circles, drink, go in circles, do the same thing over and over again, man. Constantly going off, constantly going off, constantly going off. And that's what you see. With this, this, our people are like habitual drunkards. They just continue, continue the same old cycle. Then they get Jesse Jackson and Al Sharpton, and they use the Bible because they know the culture of us in our spirit. We we are faithful 
we're, we are faith-based people in general, right? In general. They are sadist children. They, are, they have none understanding. They don't know enemies. They don't know anything. They are wise to do evil, but to do good, they have no knowledge. I am even surprised that there is even a so-called black community, right? The way our people will just hand their so-called heritage over on a platter is un unbelievable to me. It's uncanny, as they say, right? <laughs> that our people will sit up there and say, you know what? Love everybody. Be with everybody. You're just hateful. But to our own. Our own brothers and our own biological brothers and sisters and parents, we have nothing but total hatred. You'll see two women, two Eves, two black women get together and they'll go to a little show and a little dance and they'll look at each other like, I'm better than you. And they'll look at each other trying to top the, the other. But the white woman comes walking in there or the Moabite woman or any other nation, hell, a Hamite woman, well, they might have a problem with the Hamites because of the skin. But the, uh, <laughs> the, um, the Idumian, she comes in there. They be like, oh, girl, she, she rocking it. Or the men, same thing. You don't see men blowing the, uh, uh, the other ones away that don't have that skin. This is crazy, man. Um, and uh, word foolish goes back to being fool. It always goes back to being stupid, man. You know, anyway, let's go uh, to Mark, Mark 12, and let's see who the Lord was talking to when he said that. And this guy in the, in the um, video said he need to take it to his church to love your enemies. Now, meanwhile, this is the crazy thing. Through our captivity, through our oppression, depression or whatever else you want to call it, through our hardships, they use the manner of peace to destroy us. Peace is actually used to destroy us because they're going to keep telling you it's all about love and all about peace. Remember, we've been indoctrinated with that. So all you got to do is keep saying love, peace, goodwill to all men. But the reason why it never comes into play when it comes to each other, because there's never no correction on it. But you see here, the hugs, the love, they want them to be corrected, but they don't even want their own to be corrected. All because of the manner of peace and through that wild, nasty, disgusting plantation Christianity that we will sit up there and support it because we were told to love our oppressors. And whatever they do, love them anyway. All through peace. So meanwhile, through peace, you're further being destroyed. Anyway, let's go to Mark 12. And uh, 28. And one of the scribes, and having heard them reasoning together and perceiving that he had answered them well, asked him, Which is the first commandment of all? And Jesus, Yahweh, answered him, The first of all commandments is, Hear, O Israel. Why did he say, Hear, O Israel, if everybody can be saved, if everybody is supposed to be loved? It says, The Lord, and it's amazing how they turned what we believe into some form of hate and really there's no correction on gangbangers gang rap videos with them holding texts and uzis well they don't have uzis now it's the ar they got the military shit now out there but there was never any correction anyway oh israel the lord our god is one is one lord right our power is one lord and thou shalt love, and that, that's a cut to the Old Testament the Israelites who says, when Yahweh, when Yahweh said, I, I, I'm the only God, there's none else beside me. Well, here's the one you call Jesus saying, there's only one Lord, right? There's only one most high. There's no other, nobody's beside the most high. Yahweh don't even know when he's coming back, Right? The Lord our power is one Lord, and thou shalt love the Lord with all uh, the Lord thy uh, power with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind, and with all thy strength. This is the first commandment. And the second is namely this. He's still talking about the uh, hero Israel, right? Okay. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. So when did 
the one you call Jesus come on the scene and die for everybody and change everything. When clearly this scripture here tells you something totally, totally different. Let's go back in the law. He was just quoting out of the law. Okay. Levit Leviticus 19.18. Thou shalt not avenge nor bear any grudge against the children of thy people. But our people doing the total opposite. But thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. I am the Lord. That proves you that Christianity is completely phony. Christianity has destroyed us. We have nothing in Christianity but to continue being oppressed, continue following that peace, love, uh, what they call prosperity doctrine. And that's all they've ever taught us. Meanwhile, you're further being broken down, further being destroyed, even as a nation. They got these NWO agendas that they're pushing. And you see where our women are going. And you see even where Simple Jake on the left-hand side is going. But it's all love. See, they push that. So there's the, the Ephesians 6, the rulers of darkness, can keep themselves separate and have all you in a mix-up confusion to bring in that NWO, man. But Jake don't read. Jake don't pay attention. It's enough entertainment out here to distract you because that's what it means. That Jake, if you tell him something that's contrary to what he's taught or what he believes that's a little bit difficult, he don't want any part of it. You know? It's like an animal that's been caged that don't want to leave that cage anyways not much else i could say on it i just wanted to bring that out you see the difference you see what it is jake hates himself and that's what the bottom line is our people are so destroyed they hate themselves to the fact they want to correct other people for doing things to them that is in even inhumane right that's evil and it has been doing it but that's why the Galatians say that you reap what you sow. And this is the example. That's all I have on that Shalom.